Welcome back to Hazardous Endeavors. Huzzah! Hello. Mm. Yes, indeed. Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Actual Play Podcast brought to you by Digital and Dice. I have a kite. You, indeed, have a half-orc fully armored <laughs> kite. Uh, where we last left our intrepid adventurers, uh, you are on the road between Blightwatch and Abbott's Field. You had been informed by a wounded guard, uh, dwarf named Thangbrand, that a, uh, a blockade had been set up by various uh, goblinoids, orcs, and ogres, uh, stating that uh, they are stopping the supply runs from Abbott's Field to Bl uh, Blightwatch. You had taken it upon yourselves to rid the land of this terrible scourge uh, and free up the communication and uh, supply lines between the two places once again. In doing so, you made your way there and uh, have concocted a very interesting scheme. I mean, it didn't work, but it was interesting. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. That's working better than we... At I mean, least I anticipated. Next time we go with one of my plans, because obviously the human, uh, the human dart worked, right? So, <laughs> um, my plan next time. Well, he is making beautiful music right now. Clank, yes, clank, indeed. Clank, uh, clank, at this clank, point, clank, clank. Uh, Lin percussive. Lindo and Jackson are both invisible. They are about uh, 20 feet north of the road uh, and about 40 feet away from the edge of the camp. Uh, or at least the edge of the five foot deep and five foot wide trench that uh, encircles the camp in sort of an oval fashion uh, with the widest part being at the road itself. Uh, and there you are, Jackson, flying in the air, uh, making wonderful clanking noises from your armor that's echoing out over the fields. Elliot, uh, you're about uh, 20 feet south of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have just been seen by the, f the forward guard uh, who barked out some commands that you didn't understand shortly before Wilf, who's about 10 feet north of the road, uh, casts a sleep spell, causing a, uh, a good half dozen or so of your enemies to fall into a, uh, a very sudden slumber. Sleep! Hey, sleep! Lindo uh, was sleep. currently making his way towards there uh, when the sleep was cast, but then uh, I believe the call was made that uh, the time for stealth is not, and that it's, I believe, what'd you say, boom time? Boom time! Right. And Lindo is no longer on the ground. Wait, what okay. are we uh, Why don't we go ahead and start us off with a little bit of initiative. Da 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 da! Ooh. Elliot is not going last. Proud yeah, of you. yeah, probably not. All right, let's go with the the orcs. Let's see it there. It's all right. It's 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 Are you strategic. Constipated? Be, being last in initiative is strategic. You've got to you get to work around everyone else's get to plan. See what everybody Especially is for doing. what is the closest thing we have to a healer. Yes, it's it's all totally on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Wilf, roll. Uh, that's a seven. A seven. Okay, Jackson. Twelve. Okay, Lindo. Twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-four. And Elliot. Seventeen. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I will go ahead and give you all a surprise round. <gasps> surprise! Uh, because you are indeed surprising them with this. The the sleep spell has been cast. There, they're suddenly aware that something is happening. But you guys are going to have a turn to make your way forward. Uh. Jackson, you were the first to mention something, so you say, what are you doing? Um, Lindo is no longer on the ground, as I haul Lindo up uh, uh, on uh, the rope. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead and make me an athletics check as you're, as you're picking Lindo up uh, using the rope. This could be fun. I am going to have to go with a... 24 on that. Right, so you just you just pull Lindo up, what about like 20 feet of that rope, you just pull it yep. up into the air. I ragged off. Uh, <laughs> to which now you're you're dangling Lindo below you uh, and, and you were about 60 feet up. Uh, so you have about 40 feet of distance between you and Lindo. Lindo's mm -hmm. 20 feet off the ground. Uh, and you just start flying over. Yep. Okay, uh, what is your what is your movement speed while flying? Um, full. As per uh, the spell flight, yeah. Uh, da, 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 that would Elliot, do you happen to know? To have it yeah, oh. give me a second. 
Because it, does it just grant them a fly speed equal to their normal movement? Or? No, it doubles 60 their speed. Feet. 60 feet. Okay, uh, 60. so you are, you are more than able to fly directly over the encampment. All right. So uh, if you wish, you can fly directly over. Uh, on the north side of the road, there are uh, two tents about uh, 15 feet from the road itself. Um, the, cl- the, the tent closer to you has two sleeping hobgoblins in front of it. The tent further away, which is still within your movement, uh, you're actually able to see two orcs and a hobgoblin that are standing up grabbing weapons uh, and are looking around to see what's happening. Uh, the campfire that is directly north of those two tents seems to be unoccupied and unlit. South across the road, which is a little further away than you can get, mm-hmm. you can see another two tents, and then fur- beyond those you see two ogres that are, that are being roused. Uh, so they're a bit too far away, but you can definitely reach the two, o- two orcs and hobgoblin in front of the tent uh, right there. Okay, so go towards the, uh, the, the ogres at the tents. Okay. The, and drop down 15 feet. All right, leaving Lindo hanging five feet above the... the uh, okay. So, ah! you're, are you double moving at this point? So you're just kind of floating down? Might as well. Okay. Yeah. In which case, you're able to drop Lindo off basically right there next to the two ogres. Yes. Um, go ahead and make me a stealth check, Lindo. As you are dropped five feet down to the ground and basically right behind two ogres. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. And say acrobatics to land like a cat instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. 19. A 19. Okay. So you, you're, you're swung down and then just suddenly you're free fall. You tumble slightly, and then you're standing there, invisible, on the ground, behind two ogres, who are now slowly getting up and grabbing what look to be several of the trees that have been uprooted. I Um, second my breath. The orc that's standing next to them that seemed to have been kind of kicking them into usefulness Mm -hmm. is looking up and trying to figure out where that echoing clank is coming from that seems to be happening above it. Uh, But I'll say that's your turn there, Jackson. That works. Uh, the uh, surprise round, uh, I'm going to say Wilf, I think it's fair to say that your sleep spell was uh, was your surprise. Yeah, and if you'd like, I uh, try to uh, sneak a little bit further up. Okay, yeah. Go um, ahead. Um, if you want, go ahead and make me another stealth roll, and uh, you were, um, so I believe, also mean, about 40 feet away from the... Uh, it means that I only get a good, uh, like, another 12 feet up, but... That's fine, that's fine. Let's see what you got. Seven. Wait. Seven. Yeah. Wait. Uh, Seven. What? what? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Eight. 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 Okay. I'm stealthy as all okay. get out. Um, so, Wilf, you're, you're making your way up here on the north side of the road there. Um, luckily, anything that is within line of sight of you at this very moment is asleep. Oh, so, that's lovely. <laughs> so you, you're stealthily making your way through, and you haven't woken anybody up. Like a shadow at night. Elliot? Elliot run says, "Well, we've lost the stealth uh, option." Runs thirty feet closer to the thing, step through the mists, enters the camp. Okay, so you you uh, you move forward thirty feet. You bonus action to misty step and then wind up in the camp. Yep. Are, are you on the? Because you, you can get basically to the north side of the road, the south side of the road, or basically right next to the ogres. I do not want to be next to ogres. Okay. Um. So let's go with the. South side of the road? Okay. So you run forward, you misty step, you find yourself standing on the south end of the ro- south side of the road in front of a tent. There are two sleeping orcs at your feet, uh, and about uh, f- 20 feet uh, further in, you see a hobgoblin um, who is standing up and, and drawing a uh, what looks to be a longbow with an arrow, who's looking around trying to find a, a target. Nice bolt. Okay. Uh, go ahead, and is that, is that an attack roll or a save? It's an attack roll. Roll it. That's pretty cool. No, it's not. I rolled a natural one. Okay, so oh. you, you you try to coalesce your, your energy, and as, as you put it forward, there's kind of a, a spark and a fizzle, and your, your spell just kind of goes wide. Well, that's not happened before. It happens to everybody, says an invisible voice. All right, um, why don't we go ahead and get two initiative rounds at that point? Uh, see, you know what, Lindo? Lindo, you were just unceremoniously dropped behind two ogres. Go ahead and make, an, uh, make a roll, if you wish. What would you like to do? Oh, well, I'm invisible right now, right? Mm-hmm. You are 
basically, from where you're standing, there are two ogres in front of you. Mm. To your right, there's an orc who is, who is basically kicking the ogres into usefulness. Mm -hmm. And then about ten feet away from that orc is another orc who is currently picking up a great axe and looking around, uh, seeing if he can see anything that's happening. How long does the invisibility last? You don't know. Uh. Yeah, this wasn't really... You weren't really walked through this process. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I shouldn't start a fight right now where I am because I will die. So, is there any escape route or a pile of clothes where I can put on a hood and disguise myself as um, perhaps an ogre? Directly behind you are the two tents, and there's a walkway between them large enough for the ogres to move back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you do hear... Um, the casting of a spell, and you see, just as you kind of glance over your shoulder, what looks to be a bolt of frost go from one, you know, from, from one of the tents off to the other tent. You don't see what it was aiming at, but you definitely know that Elliot is in camp and has just cast a spell. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, with my invisible La Rosa, I tell her, do not let me down. And I just kind of stab at one next to me. See if it works. Orc or ogre? And yeah, let's go with an orc. Okay, uh, go ahead and make me the roll, and you have advantage on the attack. Oh, that's lovely. <clears throat> oh, speaking of which, uh, Elliot, actually, go ahead and make a... Would that be a sneak attack? Yes, this would be absolutely a sneak attack. Um, Elliot, I'm actually going to give you advantage on your attack roll as well, because oh. they, this is a surprise round. They were not expecting that. Okay. So let me know what happens with that. Uh, oh, I don't remember what my numbers are. Okay. That's pretty bad. Um, 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11. Uh, no, an 11 will not hit. A 24. Okay. A 24 will absolutely hit the orc next to you. Da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. He seems to be yelling something at the ogre uh, in kind of a, a guttural language. And remember, that surprise round. Right. Wait, wait, oh, no, you're not an assassin, you're a swashbuckler. Never mind. Oh, Jackson, you're flying flying over, and you can hear the orc basically telling it to get up and fight, you lazy bastards. Sounds about right. Yeah. Very rude. Yeah. 16. Okay, uh, so you pull a rosa, you, you say, don't let me down, and you just squick right through the orc, just kind of in one side of its rib cage and out the other, as it kind of coughs. Like looks really confused and 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 in just horrible pain, and then just slides off your blade and falls down. Although <laughs> as, as soon as you do so, you note that the invisibility slowly fades off of huh. you, and you're standing there visible, and you look up, and both of the ogres turn and look at you. Hmm. Give it your best bluff. All right, uh, top of the order, uh, we have Lindo. That's good. Lindo, <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got two ogres that are looking at you. They're just looking. Yep. So, yeah, Lindo, you have two ogres standing over you. This is the first round of combat. Uh, there's still an orc uh, about, say, ten feet away from you behind you. Uh huh. Um, How smart are these things? Insight for smart? Uh, they don't look like the brightest crayons in the box. Great. Uh, I am staring at them into their big... Beautiful eyes. Oh, God. And I want to sit there and convince them that I have come here to bring them to a better land, to Paylor's land. Okay. And I just start spewing things over Raxel and said, because I am scared poopless. Go ahead and make me a deception pers performance. I want to go performance. Okay. And I'll give you... You're, unfortunately, you are at disadvantage for this it's role. okay. It's you can do it. I believe in the Lindo Espina, the beautiful thorn. Okay. It is a 12. A 12. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, um, <laughs> What's an orc's... What's an orc's inside... Uh, ogre's inside? Wow. Um, so, they both look at you somewhat dumbfounded. One of them... Blinks at you, leans in close. Is that the sun god? Uh, <laughs> that is the sun god. Don god, don god cloak, don god cloak. See? And okay. I wave my don guard cloak because right. we are all 
children of Belor. There, that one who's leaning in has this kind of this almost like sparkly look in his <gasps> eye as you say that. The other one looks really, really upset. Uh, you're not 100 percent sure at what. Elliot, your turn. We have to save that one. Um, <laughs> there's another orc floating around, right? Uh, there's a hobgoblin directly in front of you, about 20 feet, who oh. you shot at and didn't get hit. Hmm. Who has a longbow? Who now sees you? Oh Save well, Sun Sun. I bow to your your throne of madness, crown of madness. Okay, uh, so that's a save for them. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see if Mister Hobby Gobby can do something about that. Nope. Okay, uh, that was a two on the dice. So I'm assuming that uh, he fails. Is it, you said a wisdom save. Yes. Okay, I'm assuming that it, it, no. Okay, yeah, it's <laughs> under a five. So. Yeah, he stands there for a moment, and then suddenly the crown appears up over his head and his eyes glow slightly. Oh, wait, that's a concentration spell. Right. Uh, Jackson, you are no longer invisible. As, oh, no. As suddenly uh, you just materialize. You're still flying, but you yeah. suddenly are you know able to see. I'm not being dropped 60 feet. Nope. To the ground. I'm good for now. Do I know which ogre... Um, is the one that is friends with Lindo. You are not really privy to that conversation. Okay. Well, I point to one of them. Okay. I don't know which one. And say, shoot that one. Okay. Uh, so on his turn, he does that? Yes. Okay. That could actually work in your favor. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Elliot. Um, Orc's turn. So uh, there's the one that, uh, let's see, this one is dead. Uh, and uh, we have the one that is still nearby, Lindo, who yells out uh, to the uh, to the to the ogres. Says, "What do you think you're doing? Kill it! Kill it!" Uh, uh, no. And he rushes you with a great axe. No, no, no. Oh dear. Okay. Well, that's a good way to start off a fight. Uh, so that is a natural twenty. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to go ahead and roll some damage there. Um, Don't do it. Okay, we're starting off that fight with 21 points of damage. How close is Lindo to me, and can I see him? I didn't want the Lindo um, anyways. Yes, you can see Lindo. He's uh, b- 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 about 20 feet. Cool. All of a sudden, my arcane ward. I, I have that up, right? Since I was preparing for a fight? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and say that you went yeah. through the process of doing your ritual. Your arcane yeah. ward is up. It goes off of me and flings at Lindo and protects Lindo for 15 points. Oh, okay, yeah. so so the, the orc runs forward, its great axe flying through the air in this beautiful arc that seems to be aimed right at your neck. And as it's coming down, you suddenly kind of see this kind of, like, almost like, fro- like a cloud of frost like streaming through the air that coalesces around your body and it seems to cushion the blow slightly. Uh, you still take that other six points of damage uh, from the, the just the weight of the blow. Uh, but you seem to be protected as that arcane energy kind of dissipates off of you after the hit. Would you say that I could uncanny dodge this to the left? Uh, yeah, you were aware of the attack. You can use your uncanny dodge to limit the uh, damage by half. And so I take, what, three? Yes. <laughs> Rock on, Elliot. Okay. You're um, let's see. I, I mean, I'm a little iffy on the rules with that one. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll let you have the damage first and then negate yeah. the damage you would have taken. So you instead would have taken 10. You're then that arcane ward is only blocking uh, 10 damage and okay, you take okay. nothing. Mm-hmm. So I still have five points. So Lindo, you take nothing. Uh, Elliot, you still have five points of your arcane ward. Woo-hoo, I'll woo. give you guys the benefit of the doubt on that one. Beneficent. Yeah. Setting precedent for later. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, um, it, it's got a little bit of logic to it. He's already in the process of rolling uh, of rolling back with it so that the less impact would actually happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, totally makes fine. sense. Sure. Uh, okay, so there are two orcs on the other side of the what? road that are running over towards Elliot now. Oh, crap. Um, they, they come rushing over with their great axes. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to say that the natural 19 is probably going to hit you. Yes. Uh, and that would be... Yeah. So that's a 24 and a 13. 
13 does not hit. Okay, so the 24 uh, hits you, and you take 9 points of uh, slashing damage. I take 4. Okay. From his great axe, from those two, there are two orcs on the other side of the uh, encampment, the ones mirroring the ones that were, that you had set asleep, Wilf. Um, they turn around and seem to be more curious as to what's happening, uh, but they haven't moved from their post. The hobgoblin who's standing there seems to kind of be stopping them from going anywhere, because he's actually looking around. And then, uh, as he does so, uh, he doesn't see anything. Orc, he doesn't see anything. Ah, one of the orcs does stop and then look up and see Jackson <laughs> flying <laughs> up there. And, uh, to, in response, he then pulls a javelin and hucks it up at him. I regret nothing. <laughs> so a javelin comes streaming... Uh, no, that, that's an 11. So yeah, a javelin no. just goes whistling by you, Jackson. Okay. Beneath uh, my notice. Them. Hobgoblin time. So there are three hobgoblins, one of which is notice. the one you just uh, mm -hmm. cast Crown of Madness on there. All right, Elliot. Uh, is Crown of Madness a... Concentration? It is. Okay, you need to make a concentration check against the damage you took. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm good. Okay, good. All right, so the Hobgoblin that you have Crown of Madness on turns and immediately fires an arrow at the ogre, uh, which hits. So that is that ogre, and it immediately takes Hobgoblin bow damage, which is five. So that ogre takes five. All right, uh, the ogre, not the bright-eyed, shiny ogre, but the other one who was kind of, like, really upset. Suddenly, a, kind of a black-shafted arrow sticks into its shoulder, and it kind of looks down at it dumbly. <gasps> Look how they attack your friend! Um, aside from that, the hobgoblin, who is across the street from you, Elliot, takes a shot with its longbow. Uh, and that is a grand total of a... 13? Oh, I, it doesn't hit me. Does not hit you. Okay. Uh, the hobgoblin on the road next to the two orcs takes a shot at the flying half-orc. Uh, it's a 10, so that misses you. Of course. And that is all of them. Okay. Like Back. a shadow at night. Jackson, it is your turn. You're flying, what, 45 feet in the air above the ogres? Um, yes. I do not think yes. that means what you're thinking, So you, I'm going to bring myself down and... You shouldn't bring yourself down. Yeah. Drop the up. last five feet onto the ogre that is not being charmed. Okay. Um, all right. That makes sense. So you are dropping down onto the ogre that just took a... Uh, an arrow to the shoulder? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make me... Oh, so you're... Yeah, you, are you trying to make this flashy, or are you just dropping down on it doing an aerial charge? I'm just dropping, doing an aerial, an aerial attack. Okay, so you come down on it like a ton of bricks yep. uh, with your sword drawn, and uh, go ahead and make me an attack. 13. A 13 to attack an ogre. You know, funny thing, they don't really have that high of an AC, so yeah, you hit. Oh, that's helpful. All right, so that first attack is going to do five. Okay. And then the second attack, if I could roll on the table, it would be helpful, is going to be a 17. Uh, yeah, that, that, that damage or hit? Hit. Yeah, you hit. And why not, let's pop a, uh, a first level uh, smite on it. Okay. Roll it, roll it. And that is going to be a 24. 24 points of damage. Okay. That, that was certainly... It, well, is it still box cars when you roll two eights with They're just eights? much larger cars. Bigger cars. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, Jackson, you stab into it as you come down from the sky and then slash into it again, and it, it bellows out in pain. Um, it's turn. So it turns and swings at you with its fairly large-looking club. <laughs> the yeah. ogre's got me on initiative. Uh, to which fairly large club comes swinging through the air at a 14, so that misses. Correct. Um, Lindo, the one on you, kind of blinks, sees this happening, looks at you, roll on, stands up and takes a swing at Jackson. But he just kind of puts one big finger in your face, like, hold on. That's I'm waiting. So 
Uh, that is a 25 to hit Jackson. That will actually hit. Uh, take 13 points of bludgeoning damage mm. uh, as its great club connects and almost kind of swats you out of the sky a little bit. You're able to kind of keep control, but uh, it mm. definitely rattled you a bit. My goal is to convince this guy that you're some sort of, like, orc son of Baylor. Yeah. Fine uh, in Wilf, the sky. It is your turn. All right, I have goals. so... From my little uh, grassy spot right there, I've got a good sh- uh, good view of the uh, uh, orc that is axing Lindo a question. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming. And so I, with my loot, start hitting the little high notes. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. As I cast Dissonant Whisper. Okay. Uh, And it's going to have to make a wisdom save. (laughs) It will certainly try. Uh, Let's see. Let's go ahead and call that a level two. Okay. Uh, Wisdom save on the orc, uh, which is a grand total of a 12. Oh, yeah, that's not going to do it. So he's going to take four dice, six psychic damage. Okay. (laughs) And he now must flee. Uh, Well, let's see what happens after the psychic damage. You might not must to do anything. That is a f- seventeen. Yeah, he damage. did. <laughs> yeah, so so your deedly deedly deedlies uh, cause its ears to rupture and it it yells out in pain as it hits the ground, clutching at its head, and then just face first plants in the dirt. Is that my friend? No, that was the orc that just. Oh, axed you. Good. Okay. And I, get I uh, asked you. I get it. You stop making my way towards the actual gate. Gotcha. So you start making your way in. Lindo, it's your turn again. Mm-hmm. Uh. The ogre seemed to be batting at uh, Jackson, who's oddly enough just kind of floating around, mostly avoiding getting Don't hit. Don't hit him. He is the orc son of Baylor. Also, see how that guy just tried to hit me? Obviously exploded. Baylor. Um. The ogre that uh, Jackson is currently attacking uh, yells out something in giant to it, uh, which, uh, Jackson, do you understand giant or? No. No? Okay. So no, none of you quite uh, get what that is. Um, go ahead and give me a deception roll, because this is absolutely a deception. You are a liar. A fantastical liar. Yeah? Eleven. Eleven. Uh, the ogre... Oh, he he seems definitely uh, he seems split. He's like looking at you, looks at Jackson, and looks at you, and then has this look of almost betrayal on his face. No, oh, bad, bad. No, and looks very angry at you now. Good, good, Lindo, good. Uh, Elliot, your turn. I'm going to say that's your turn, because you're trying to calm it down. I have two orcs on me. Uh, yep. Yeah, you do. Are they standing next to each other? Yes. Yes, they are. Well, I don't want them to be next to me. Thunder wave. Okay, so you just pivot and cast thunder wave. Well, causing... it's actually more of a holding my staff as I add a, a charge to it. Okay, so you, you empower your spell through your staff and a massive echoing boom of thunder and energy echoes out of it. Uh, that is a failed save and that's a two and a one. So yeah, they both fail their save. Uh, so go ahead and do your damage and you blast them both back ten feet. Okay. Uh, it's two die eight. Unless yep. you're casting it at a higher uh... No, it's just level one. Okay. Ooh, that's 12 damage, though. Uh, they, they both die. <laughs> Shasha Bowie! So both of those orcs uh, just basically, you they're ragdoll, just flying back 10 feet, and they just there tumble in the two dirt. two sleeping orcs next to me. Did I hit them, too? Uh, you were kind of standing closer to the middle of camp than them, so okay. I'm going to say no. They were behind okay. you. That's good. I didn't really want to. Uh, albeit that was a very loud sound next to a couple sleeping forms. Uh, does sleep spell specifically state what has to be done to rouse them? Uh, the, the, okay, let, 
Each creature affected by this spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. The sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. Okay, so they haven't taken damage and no one's taken an action. Uh, and what is the duration of the spell? One minute. Okay, so you cast that at the very beginning of the surprise round. So they are out for another, you know, eight rounds. Uh, and so as you, and concentration on that, or is it just um, duration? No, it's, it's just a duration. Nice. All right, then. Cool. So they do not wake up. Uh, but they and they are still down. Uh, let's go with uh, what do we have? Surviving orcwise. Okay, so they're dead. They're asleep. The two that are on the other side um, finally take action. Uh, one of them continues to throw a uh, javelin at the flying half orc, uh, and that is a sixteen. So that misses. Yep. Everyone uh, loves the, the magical other one. Uh, rushes forward towards Elliot though, in, in after its comrades had fallen down, uh, comes at you with a great axe. Uh, and that is okay. Yep, that is a as a twenty two to hit. Yeah, you. that'll hit. Uh, so you're going to take an, a nine points of damage from a great axe. That's okay. I'm still fine. All right. Uh, and then that is all of the surviving and awake orcs. Cool. Uh, hobgoblin's turn. There is the hobgoblin who is the bow takes another oh, shot wow. at the ogre because you didn't tell him to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, that's a 13, so he hits the ogre for five. I am helping. Yep. Sort of. <laughs> uh, let's see, we have the two other hobgoblins. Um, one of them also has a bow, although this time he looks over and sees Wilf uh, progressing his way forward after he cast that spell. And there's a uh, an arrow headed your way, Wilf. Aww. Uh, but that's only an eight, so that misses you. Hey, hey everyone's a critic. And the other hobgoblin, I believe. Let's see, that one. Yep. Oh, okay. They're already done. Because I already shot at uh, Jackson and I already shot at the ogre. So, yep. That is them. Okay. Uh, Jackson, it's your turn. All right. I continue attacking the one that I had been previously. Okay. Hacking into it. Hacking into it. Uh, Very large, don't... slow target. You're only looking for an 11 to hit, so. That's fine. I just got to figure out what number this is. You should you, have a dice. You that and you your can pretty read. dice. Yeah. You, you should probably my... use something a little bit. Uh, I should. Hey, I got him some of those pretty dice for um, Christmas. So we'll it's, it's still a 13. A 13 absolutely yeah. hits, yeah. For six damage. Six points? Okay. Yep. It's still standing. It looks pretty rough. And one last uh, hit on they him. Should explain. Misses. Okay. Terribly. Gotcha. The, the flying is kind of throwing you off a little. Yeah. But I thought high ground automatically, you know, he makes him undefeatable. Respect the high ground. Right. Um, the ogre you keep hitting um, is bellowing in rage, swinging its great club around its head. Um, oh, okay, yep, that's a natural 19 on the die. And they do not like you. Uh, so that is... I do better is, against the undead. It's a 25 to hit you. Uh, take another 13 points of bludgeoning as it smacks you yet again with its Ugh. uprooted tree. Uh, the other one is looking at Lindo, and it looks it looks hurt. It don't looks be betrayed. Afraid. No, don't be betrayed. It's Bad. like it's going to be fine. No! And it swings it. Man, you are just unlucky as a, as a human being at or this very moment. am I very, very lucky? Oh, are you? Am I? Because that's a natural 20. On I the, spent the, a luck point. Oh, Okay. <laughs> So, uh, what is that? Does that mean I'm re-rolling that die? It is. It, it does mean you get to re-roll your attack die. Oh, that's, that's probably very good. And I good. get to choose either. Okay. Uh, so, the other dice roll is a 10. I so, take the 10. Okay, so that's a total of a 16 to hit you? Uh, uh, it misses. Okay, <laughs> so you turned a crit into a miss. Oh, no! You are, you are very, very lucky. I'm just, just so lucky. Just touch it a little on the elbow. Why would you try to hit me, my friend? So what what happens at like this point paylor. is it, it reels up for this giant two-handed swing down at you. It looks angry and betrayed. And as it does so, it swings down and its its neighbor, the one who's wildly swinging at Jackson, kind of swings its hand back and its, its great club catches midair with the one that's attacking you, swinging it off balance, and it lands mere inches away from your foot, cracking the earth around it. I only beat a little. Okay. So that was, uh, that was a significant turn of events there. Uh, Will, <laughs> it is your turn. Uh, the uh, 
hobgoblin that shot an arrow at yeah, me? Yeah. Your mother was a pork pie, vicious mockery. He needs to give me a uh, uh, save. Uh, My dice are well, hot. He rolls well, a natural 20. He makes a save. Well, dice are hot. I'll flip him off. Okay. Uh, he As I move, uh, sort of rude. stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You lock that? No. <laughs> well, no, it's your turn. But I'm like, Rude. You have another chance. <laughs> it's your turn, Save Linda. Save Zog Save the world. I I am going to take some time to look at my friend. Okay. And and be like, see? And and let him know that, you know, because of Paylor's love, it has missed me. And that I am here mm-hmm. to show him the way. The fact that he has a, the fact that he has a negative three to his intelligence checks, mm-hmm. and that I just rolled a four? Uh-huh. <laughs> Can I perform anyways? Yeah, why not? I just want to see how well this happens, because... <laughs> Sorry, my nipples got a little hard. Okay, so 17 plus 8. 25. Thank you. So, he, he I actually... Give him, I give him the biggest Paylor love story out of my butt. And he actually takes a step back from you and is looking... Very unsure of his worldview. As he should. But he, he's not attacking anyone at this point. And he, like, looks at his great club, looks back at you. Not bad? Not bad. Not, I mean, like, yeah, not bad. Unsure of this. You should have uh, an existential crisis and sit down and think about it for a while. Exocry. <laughs> Sits down. Looks very upset. We're moving on. <laughs> Elliot, it is your turn. Well, Mr. Orc in front of me. Brr. Have a very... I'm just going to put a hand on your shul- his shoulder. Or attempt to. You're going to gently caress the Orc's shoulder? No, I'm going to turn it into a... Him try to turn him into a popsicle. All right, roll it. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh I'll get it. He's is giving he, him the is cold he, shoulder. Um... He's uh, wearing, wearing armor. armor. Okay. Yeah. What do you got? It's fairly decent. 16? Yes. A 16 will hit. Oh, I don't That's remember this cool. one. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, 2d6. Okay, shut up. They're wearing hide armor, so. That's the wrong one. Yeah. And Elliot's like, ice to meet you. Oh, 2d8. Yep. 2d8 because your cantrips are now doing extra dice because you're level yep. 5 Freeze. or higher. Freeze. Yep. In the name for seven. Of it dies. So you you reach forward and you clasp it on the shoulder as the the, the energy you know pushes through your body and starts to freeze its flesh around it. It kind of tries to squirm away from you, but it can't seem to. And as it does so, your your ice kind of just builds up around its neck and head and chest, and eventually it just kind of staggers and falls with a kind of a sickening crack as it hits the ground. Poke. Ah, yes, yeah, so you tip it over, and it, it cracks as it hits the ground. Now that's cold. All right, anything else, Elliot? Um, nothing else is attacking me. I'm going to go around the tent. I've been hit enough for today. Okay. So you, you're trying to hide at that point? Uh, mostly just get cover. Okay. Just get out um, of sight. So there is now only one orc standing that is not asleep. Uh, one orc alive that is not asleep. Um... And it sees... Well, are you making... Go ahead and make me a stealth check if you're trying to hide away from it. I didn't use an action, so I can't. Okay. So you you basically make your way behind a thing. Yes. Uh, You are followed uh, at your heels by a very angry-looking orc Mm -hmm. who comes uh, comes around uh, with his great axe, uh, bellowing something at you. Um, On the flip side, I believe a uh, 12 will miss you. Nope. Oh, I guess another one to the slaughter. Yeah. Uh, Jackson, you're, you're just hearing bellows of rage. It's not really saying much. You ever, right. you ever wonder if Elliot's a good guy? Often. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, and your hobgoblin crits on the ogre. Yay! So, uh... Oh, wait, wait. We're good. <laughs> okay, yeah, Crown of Madness stays up because you made yeah. your concentration. All right. That was That's a natural 20. Spell. Ooh. So, um... Wow, Okay. 
So the ogre that's swinging at Jackson as it turns and as it like as it looks over at the other ogre who is sitting down having an existential crisis next to the campfire. I'm sitting next to it. Okay, so Lindo, you're sitting down next yeah. to the ogre. The ogre reaches out. It looks like it's about to bellow something as the hobgoblin in the middle of camp just l- fires an arrow that lodges straight underneath its chin, just going up underneath its jawbone into its kind of into its head and it kind of coughs and sputters and then slumps down and takes a moment to just cough, sputter and then die as, wow, your your hobgoblin killed the ogre good job well, Um, that works that'll do Uh, there are two other hobgoblins on the other hand uh, one of which I believe was shooting at Wilf yeah, can, we're exchanging insults. Uh, it's a 21 to hit you. I feel insulted. Okay, uh, you, t- you take five. And uh, look, look, I'm no longer theoretically flying. Oh, yeah, I've oh, well, got let's, to... Look, yeah, let's uh, see that concentration. Oh, no, you're good. All right, and Jackson, there's an arrow that misses you terribly. The seven. Okay. All right. Dodge it sweetly like some sort of badass Superman. Jackson, your turn. All right, since I have a 60-foot fly speed, yep. I will go as quickly as I can to the closest hoblog- hobgoblin. The one that was firing at you? Yes. Easily get there, yeah. All right. And... Aerial charge. Make yep. your swing. Uh, that's a 20. You hit. Ugh. Let's see that damage. Four, seven. Seven points. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, you drop it. And... Can I continue on to the other one? Um, it was about, f- I'd say, 40 feet away. Actually, no, because you were... Yeah, it's about 30 feet away, and the other one... Yeah, you can absolutely get to the other one. I will get to the other one and attack that one. Okay, make your attack. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 misses. Oh, well. Okay, so you're, you're over there, and that one has its bow, so you're going to have a good chance with that one. Um, the ogre continues to... Let's see. Wow! I didn't think you could get a negative intelligence check. I rolled a one. He continues to sit there staring off into the sky. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what he does. He starts staring at the sun and <laughs> contemplating it. Don't look directly at it. I uh, perked my eyes this way. It's shiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bright. Yeah, warm. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Right then, that's a travesty. Wolf, your turn. <laughs> I get my way into the camp. I see Lindo sitting down having a little powwow with his new friend Zog Zog. And I look over, and Elliot has an orc right next to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he does. Hey, pigskin, your mother was a pork pie. Okay. Okay. Vicious mockery. If Vicious he could mockery. give me Ignore a him. wisdom he has a for save. Uh, he fails his wisdom save with and an eight. so he takes 2d4. And he's at disadvantage for his attacks. Okay. He takes 2 damage. Okay, he's still up, but he is a disadvantage. Gotcha. I got you back. Uh, Lindo, Thank are you, you continuing to, to sit with your friend over there? Dear friend, how sure. would you feel about having a job? Working for Baylor. Uh, yeah. You work for Sun. Work for Sun. Kill for Sun. Kill for Sun. Uh, yeah. Okay. You spend your turn attempting to. Uh, Do I need a role performance on that too? Yeah, no. At this point, it's just kind of sitting there doing his thing. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Elliot, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Another hand. Roll it. 18. Hit. Nine. It <laughs> dies. The orc no longer has disadvantage on its uh, on its say uh, on its uh, attack rolls because it's dead. There are no l- living awake orcs. There is, on the other hand, one hobgoblin surviving, who now turns around, draws his sword, and attacks Jackson in a last ditch effort to save what's left of his. Uh, nope, he misses. So save what's left of his dignity. Yep. Jackson, it's your turn. Oh, look. I am... He gets attacked. Fifteen. 
A 15 misses by one. And one more. No, no, we're good. Okay, so wild swinging back and forth. Lots yes. of clanging of blades parrying each other. Yep. We'll go with that. Uh, let's see. Ogre continues his existential crisis because I can't roll over a four. <laughs> <laughs> How many ones do you have to roll on intelligence checks before they basically just die of stupidity? Will, your turn. Many. I <clears throat> die for son. Die Kill for, for son. Kill for son. Stop <laughs> singing this lovely Pelo children's chant to the, to the ogre. Try, try to help out on this. Uh -huh. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And that's a 25 on my performance check. It looks at you. For a moment it looks upset. And then... <laughs> no, no, how much I love you. Yeah. Please don't yeah. take my yeah. sunshine away. <laughs> right, that's continuing. <laughs> Lindo... Can you just continue your uh, thing? Yeah, I continue having this like long conversation with this obviously super intelligent guy. Okay, Elliot, your turn. <laughs> Put me out of my misery. Okay. There's what sing. You have the hobgoblin with the crown of madness, and then another hobgoblin, and those are the last surviving enemies. Well, the crown of madness. When I say go kill that one. Okay. And then I walk, and then I try to cast um, frost bite. Oh right, my apologies. Um, I believe I did. I forget to. No, he killed the ogre last round. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Frostbite. I will frostbite the other one. Okay, roll. Ah, uh, that's not a roll. Oh, it's a save. Save. Uh, that's an eight on my die. Okay, yeah, no. He fails. Four, seven. Seven points. He's still up. Well, he has disadvantage in his next attack attack. Attack attack. Okay. Yes. Disadvantage! Um, to which he uh, attempts to utilize that attack on uh, Jackson at disadvantage. He rolled a one on his lower die. <laughs> He's having a terrible time of it. The Hobgoblin with the Crown of Madness. What is he doing? He's attacking the, the other, other yeah. Hobgoblin. It's another natural 20. <laughs> for the love of all of these various gods. Um, yep. For Baylor. So, so this one poor hobgoblin who's swinging at Jackson, who Jackson and him are just parrying back and forth, very just wildly clanging blades. Suddenly is hit in the, the the back by this icy blast. He seems to kind of freeze up for a moment, and as he's reeling back for another another shot, um, an arrow just goes right through his neck as he just coughs and falls over falls over dead. That hobgoblin sure likes his neck shots. He seems to be doing a fairly good job of it. Yeah. Uh, Jackson, it's your turn. There's a surviving hobgoblin. Uh, it's got a crown of madness on it. Oh, look. It has nothing else to attack. Yep. Let's get him. Okay. You're easily within range. Yep. You just fly over. Fly over. And eventually... Hey, look at that. I hit with okay. my second attack. Okay. Let's, let's see some damage. Is this a normal hit or is this a, a uh, This is a uh, normal hit for 11. And that does it. Congratulations. You uh, you end the uh, the current situation of, uh, of not sleeping fighting enemies. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap up for this episode and we'll have you guys clean up next time. So thanks for joining us, Digidicers, for this amazing, uh, wonderful combat. Good friend. Yeah. Good. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Son! And until next time, dear Digidicers, Game, Game on, on Internets! internets.